where is it? sense of destiny, a gold medal, a new team, the MVP. The bottom line, the MVP is not my goal. I, if we don't win the world championship, I'm, I'm going to be crushed. Two men, two paths, but one trophy, only one champion. Chicago Bulls and the Phoenix Suns. Here's the brand new America West Arena host to the finals in its first year as the Suns home court. Phoenix had the NBA's best record this year and the Suns have home court advantage in this series. Still, they're decided underdogs in the finals to the defending champion Bulls. And here comes the home team. I'm Bob Costas and welcome to the NBA Finals. In the case of the Chicago Bulls, it's welcome back for the third year in a row. They seek, as you know, to become only the third team to win three NBA championships in succession. To join George Mikan's Minneapolis Lakers of the early 50s, who won three straight, and Bill Russell's Celtics, who reeled off an untouchable eight straight in the 50s and 60s. From the Celtics' last title of the Russell era in 1969 until the Lakers of 87 and 88, no NBA team had won back-to-back. -back. But the last six years have produced repeats by Los Angeles, Detroit, and now Chicago. And now the Bulls try to separate themselves from an already elite group and move up a notch in history by eclipsing the Suns for number three. Phoenix, meanwhile, has been in the finals only once before, losing to the Celtics in 1976. So they'll try to become champions for the first time in their 25-year history. The focal points, of course, are Barkley and Jordan. Barkley is the NBA's most quotable player, and he's been as accessible to the press as ever leading up to tonight's Game 1. But the news is that Michael Jordan has broken his two-week media silence by sitting down with Ahmad Rashad for a lengthy interview that you'll see at halftime. Here's a quick bite of it as he responds to the criticism of his trip to Atlantic City two weeks ago. I mean, I, th I think one thing that a lot of people tend to forget, and even the media guys, they don't know what it takes to play the game of basketball. They don't know what it takes to prepare yourself to play the game of basketball. My teammates do. My loyalty is to my teammates. Uh, and I must prepare myself so that I can show that loyalty to the team. And I must do whatever I feel is my correct method of, of doing that. And uh, it was a means of relaxing with my family and my, and my friends. And it got me ready to play the game. Uh, I think the media took it out of context. A lot of people say, well, maybe you shouldn't have done it at that particular time, or, you know, um, you know, it was just a bad scenario. Well, no one knows what's good and what's a bad scenario uh, unless you're the person that's actually going through that scenario. And I felt it was good that I get away. It just so happens that it was Atlantic City, and people took that further than when it should. Yeah, I, I had to accept that, and, and I did, but I, I didn't let it affect what my main objective was, and that was to go out there and, and show loyalty to this team, to my teammates, and get us to the next level. 
We'll give almost the entire halftime over to Ahmad's interview with Michael Jordan. Right now, we'll give the broadcast over to Marv, Mike, and Magic. Marvelous. All right, Bob, and first to a man who has made it to the NBA Finals nine times. And, Magic, I know you spent much time chatting with the likes of Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley in your days as members of the Dream Team in Barcelona. And I would think there have been uh, several conversations, animated conversations, on the subject of winning a championship. So when we were in Barcelona riding home from practice one day, Charles Barkley stood up and said, hey, the Phoenix Suns will be in the world championship. So he was feeling good about himself until Michael Jordan then stood up and said, look, Charles, there's only four guys on this team with world championship rings, and you're not one of them, so sit down. Uh, what about the friendship between Jordan and Barkley? How will that be affected this series? Well, Charles Barkley has said all week long that Michael and him are going to play golf, they're going to go out to dinner. But in 1988, when Isaiah Thomas and the Detroit Pistons met the Lakers, it put a strain on our relationship. My teammates were wondering if he went to the basket, would I hire foul him to see if I really wanted to win? And I can say right now that it did affect our relationship. All right, Mike, we have focused on the two superstars, uh, Charles Barkley and Michael Jordan, but this is a series that certainly could be decided by other people. Mark, no question that Barkley and Jordan will draw the most attention. They'll also draw the most double team. So other players must step up and produce, as happened in the last round for both teams. For Phoenix, it was Kevin Johnson who, against the Seattle Supersonic defense, continued to penetrate for scores or, at the appropriate time, got to the defense and then dished off to his teammate Charles Barkley. For Chicago, as Michael Jordan struggled against New York's defense, it was Scottie Pippen who hit two game-winning shots. Game four, the off-balance one to win that one and then in game six a critical three-pointer with a minute remaining in the game to seal victory for the chicago bulls so again it'll be those other players the supporting cast that will decide the championship round and oh magic i'm going to give two awards out before we even get started the purple heart award goes to dan marley who has to guard michael jordan and the red badge of courage to horace grant who matched his head up against charles barkley all right we are set to get underway for Charles Barkley, the goal is that first championship ring. For Michael Jordan, the quest begins for three in a row.